What is random? Is it actually random or is it just how we perceive random? For example, are the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, are they a random sequence of numbers? They don't seem like it, but maybe that is random and we just don't perceive it to be random. This is one of the biases that prevents us from generating random numbers by ourselves. Humans are, can't inherently generate a random number without some sort of bias or source that isn't random. So for example, if you ask someone to generate a number between 1 and 10, the likely answer is going to be 7. Most people answer 7. Because of this, we need machines to generate random numbers for us. But the universal machine, known as the computer, can't actually generate random numbers or truly random numbers by itself. Because computers do what they're told, they're given an input and then pass it through a series of instructions or calculations and then release an output. So they can't make a conscious decision just like closing their eyes and pointing to a number like we can or pointing to any position because that would require some sort of thinking, which computers can't do. So when we look at a random number, we look at a random sequence of numbers. You wouldn't call the number five a random number. Like it might be random, but it depends on the context of where that random number is. So if it's in the range of five to five, then it's not a random number because that's the only choice. But if it's in the range of one to 10 per se, then it is, then it could be a random number. But here comes the whole point of a human's perception of random numbers. Sometimes we just need a number to appear random and it doesn't actually have to be truly random. And this is true for most cases. For example, we have games who use random number generators. When you pick up a power up in Mario Kart, I believe that's what they're called, then you get a random power up. But then we actually have applications where we need true random numbers. For example, cryptography. When we're encrypting a, let's say a text message, maybe you wanna use a random number sequence for that. But it has to be truly random because if a hacker exploits some sort of pattern, then they're able to decrypt that message. So let's start with the numbers that appear to be random. These are called pseudo random numbers. These numbers are generated using a seed input, which is basically an initial number that is used to generate a random number. So there's two common algorithms used to generate pseudo our random numbers. The first being the middle square algorithm made by John von Neumann, which basically takes an input, squares it, and then takes the middle numbers in between. These can be two, three, or four middle numbers, anything you really want. It's just going to cut off the rest. And then it's going to take that number and square it and then do the exact same pattern. So it's the cycle of generating a number based off of the past number. You'll see this in the second algorithm as well. But eventually it will come to a point where it will reach a number and then return back to the original number, in which point it will start cycling again. And the numbers it takes before the cycle repeats is called the period. This period is also visible in the linear congruential algorithm. We have M, which is the modulus, we have A, which is the multiplier, and we have B, which is the increment. This is how the algorithm looks like. It's going to be A times the initial seed value we're given, add B, and then we divide by M and take the rem remainder. This operation is known as modulus. Now the goal is to increase the amount of numbers it takes to actually repeat the cycle. And this is easy in the linear, con linear congruential algorithm because the number of times it takes to repeat the cycle is m. So you want to make sure that m is extremely large. And you may be thinking, Raheel, since this cycles, doesn't that mean that there's an, a pattern to it? And like I said, yes, there is a pattern to it and therefore it is less secure. But modern algorithms like the linear congruential algorithm are actually way more developed and are sometimes completely indistinguishable from true random numbers. The great benefit of generating pseudo random numbers is that it is extremely quick to generate them. You may have started wondering where we get the seed value from. It's just like you have to have a random number to create a random seed, otherwise if you keep putting in the same seed, it's just gonna be the same sequence. But we can actually use the CPU clock for this. You can imagine that you just look at the time right now and you take the minute of the time. So if it's like 1042, then you're gonna take two. And two, you could say, is a random number. Even though the clock isn't inherently random because it's increasing its value linearly. We can actually use that value as a seed because most likely it's gonna vary. And usually this is the amount of randomness that you want. It just needs to appear random, even though a clock isn't truly random. It works for our benefits and it's really fast because CPUs have an internal clock and they go off of epoch or POSIX time, the amount of seconds between January 1st, 1970 and this very moment. But you may ask, how do we generate a truly random number if a machine like a computer can't generate a truly random number? We have to get it from an outside source. And usually this outside source takes a bit more time. 
which is one of the downsides to actually getting truly random numbers. One of the ways you can get it is through the physical phenomenon known as radiation decay. Radiation releases electrons at a random, unpredictable rate. Even if we can measure the exact velocities and accelerations and the approximate positions of where the electrons might be, we still can't predict where they are going to be. This allows us to create a non-repeating and non-reproducible sequence of numbers, which is useful for things like cryptocurrency, like I mentioned, and like stuff like internet security. So the secure connection between your browser and the servers, or let's say gambling, when you're generating a deck of cards that is has actual sticks. And of course, there are downsides to this method too. First, it requires extra hardware, which like I said, makes it take longer to generate. And there's also the fact that it's non-reproducible. So let's say you're testing a program to work with a specific set of random numbers and not any set of random numbers. This way, you would not be able to use truly random numbers because they cannot be reproduced since you don't have the seed or there is no seed per se. One great benefit of this is that it's impossible to decrypt. So you may think we have pseudo random numbers, which are relatively insecure and are also quick to generate. And then we have truly random numbers, which take longer to generate, but end up being more secure. Wouldn't it be good if we could have something that's really quick to generate and really secure? Well, basically, we can take our algorithms from our pseudo random number generator and replace the seed from something like a non-random clock to a random source like radiation decay. This way, the, it is impossible to predict if you mix up the variations, which is what modern algorithms do. These types of algorithms are known as cryptographically secure algorithms because you can see that they are more secure because they don't yield one specific pattern besides the cycle if you decide to use it. Then we have the problem of probability. A good way of explaining this is by using dice. So if you have one dice, you can have six possible values one to six. The chances of rolling the number three is equally as likely as rolling the number six or rolling the number one. So let's say you want to roll the number seven with two die. You could use any number of combinations like five and two, four and three, six and one. But now let's say you want to roll the number 12. Well, there's only one combination. It's highly unlikely that you'll roll the number 12, uh, but it's still random. You can see that uniformly distributed results like the one die are just as random as the probability driven results, even though the probability driven results dictate how likely you are to generate a specific set of random numbers. That's all I've got for you on random numbers for today. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button and drop a like down below and comment if you know any other algorithms that I didn't cover in this video. See ya!